then what should you do then shift the signal to the right then we say right shift you can check that here you see so if n and k so what is the sign here n has a positive sign k has a negative sign so that means n and k have different signs so if n and k have different signs then what should you do shift to the right that's what I told you right shift the signal to the right here n and k have the same sign you see minus n minus k so shift to the left right and when it comes here as you can see n minus k but k is negative here so since k is negative it is actually this is this becomes positive so n and k will have the same sign if they have the same sign then shift it to the left and here they have different signs so shift it to the right so this is only uh, a tip for you to to easily memorize this concept however there is no need to by heart it if you understand how this k affects the signal k affects uh, 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 n minus k or minus n minus k you can appropriately shift the signal either to the left or the right apply the same concept for the continuous time signals where instead of n you will have t so it will be t minus k or minus t minus k okay if k is positive or k is negative it will be t minus k or minus t minus k and shift the signal accordingly to the left or right we will take some examples later now let us look at the classification of system so far we have classified signals now we will look at classification of systems let's see how the systems are classified classification of systems systems are classified under various categories the first type is static versus dynamic systems static versus dynamic system so a system can be either static or dynamic again we always take the discrete time signals as an example but to understand that the same concept can be applied to continuous time signals so there is no difference there is no hard and fast rule that you should always take either a discrete time signal or a continuous time signal it's up to you so to understand things better usually we take the example of discrete signals because you know that discrete signals are obtained from the continuous signals continuous time signal so there's no actually there is no difference in the way you process this signal so or to understand the concept you can take the help of either of these two signals so a discrete time system is said to be a static or memoryless very important let's let's say we have a discrete time system this this is called a static or memoryless system if its output at any instant of time depends on the present input so the output of this system let's let's say you have a system whose input let me represent as input and you have some output okay if this output depends at any instant it depends on only the present input and if it doesn't depend on the past or the future values of the input then it is said to be a static system or memoryless system for example say there is a system whose impulse response can be defined say the input to the system is x of n is a discrete system let me be very specific let me call it as a discrete system whose input is x of n and the output is y of n so this dis discrete system can be called as a static system if y of n depends on x of n something like this if y of n is a into x of n then we say that this system is a static system or memoryless system you can observe that the output at any instant of time depends only on the input at that instant of time it is not dependent the output is not dependent on the previous or the future values of the input signal x of n 
then only you can call it as a static system otherwise we call that system as a dynamic system so a dynamic system is that system whose output at any instant of time depends on the previous or depends on the future uh, values of the input signal for example y of n if it has the following form sigma k is equal to 0 to n say x of n minus k then this is said to be a dynamic or memory system dynamic or memory system so you can observe that y of n takes not only it, it, it takes not only values at the current instant of time it also takes values previous values of x of n so when k is equal to 0 it is x of n that's good if k is 1 then it is x of n minus 1 that means to compute y of n so this is you need to know the previous value of x of n that is you need to know x of n minus 1 or x of n minus 2 n minus 3 so since it depends on the previous values or sometimes it may depend on the future values also like if it is x of n plus k then it depends on the future values in that case we say that this discrete system has a memory so it needs to store the values of the input signal that's why it is called a memory system or a dynamic system okay because it needs to take care of the previous and the future values of x of n so a system can be either a static system or a dynamic system let us look at the second type of classification that is time variant versus time invariant versus time variant systems so time invariant versus time variant so these classifications are also very important from examination point of view so in the exam he will give you a particular system and he will ask you what is the what is the type of the system uh, he is referring to so you have to find out whether it is static or dynamic or time variant or time invariant or some other the other ways of defining the systems that we that we will discuss uh, in the coming slides so when can you say a system is a time invariant system so a system is said to be time invariant the name itself says invariant that means the input output characteristics should not change with the time so a system either it is a discrete system or a continuous same system is said to be time invariant if the input output characteristics do not change with the time so if the input and output okay so they should not change and say let me say something like this they should not change with time so if they don't change with time so if that is not the case then we say that it is a time invariant system if they change with time then the system is time variant so invariant means should not depend on time variant means it depends on time let's see the examples to make to, to, to get good clarity let's say you have a system a discrete system whose input and output are defined in this way y of n is equal to x of n minus x of n minus 1 tell me is it a time variant system or time invariant system so to check whether it is time variant or time invariant if you delay the signal say by k units check whether the output is also delayed by k units or not that means the simple way to check whether it is time invariant or not is replace n with n minus k that means now instead of giving input to the system as x of n you give the delayed version of x of n for your reference let me draw this simple figure so this is the discrete system okay discrete system whose input is x of n and output is y of n and which has a characteristic similar to the one I showed here y of n is equal to x of n minus x of n minus 1 so if you give the input as x of n the output is y of n given by this equation 
what happens if you delay the input signal that means you know delay means replace n with n minus k where k is positive so if you delay the signal by k units that means now the